Welcome to We Are Soccer. It's Bundesliga chat time again. And here we are with our Bundesliga expert, Nate. Nate, how you doing, buddy? You all right uh, tonight? Just peachy. Always good. Always good. Especially with the big Stuttgart victory over the weekend. So happy that finally happened. Yeah, they got back on track a little bit there, didn't they? So yeah. before we uh, before we jump in and chat about that big Stuttgart win uh, and look upon the season here, uh, I just want to remind folks who are watching our Bundesliga chat time video that the Bundesliga obviously is the German league, um, the top German league out there. And positions one through four head to the Champions League. So at the end of the season, teams who finish first, second, third, or fourth head to the Champions League the following season. The team finishing in fifth heads to the Europa League. Uh, the team finishing in sixth heads to the Europa Conference League qualifying tournament. How exciting. Um, they, they just need to scrap that whole thing. I think we can all agree is, there. Is that even being played on anything? No. Like, have no. you seen that? Like, yes, I saw, it's not on ES, like, I haven't seen I, it on ESPN Plus or Paramount or anything. Uh, I don't know where. I Maybe I saw a replay of it, but it's terrible. I mean, it, it's pointless because teams, the big teams head into it and they're not, they don't really care about it. So it's, it's, it's crap. It's just another FIFA moneymaker. Um, and, and out of the 18 teams in the Bundesliga, if you finish 17th or 18th, you are relegated to Bundesliga 2. And if you finish in 16th position, you head to the relegation playoff. Uh, Nate, you and I had a discussion about this a couple of weeks ago, the relegation playoff. That's a really interesting uh, concept that the Bundesliga has. Do you want to explain explain that to the viewers? Because uh, I love it, by the way. But uh, I'll let yep. you explain it if you want, man. So in Bundesliga two, your your first and second team are automatically promoted. You know that's just standard. But your third place team doesn't automatically get promoted. They have to play a two leg match against the sixteenth place team, and the the highest, basically that just like the champions league type knockout, the highest goal goals in those two, two games, you know, wins, losses, those two games gets to the honor of being in Bundesliga one. So um, last year, Cologne was the one on the fence and actually we'll, we'll talk about it later. They're actually doing really well now mm -hmm. um, two months later, but they are the team that actually had to go up uh, and, basically win two matches in order to stay in first place. My Stuttgart uh, several years ago was in the similar route and actually got knocked out by Union Berlin. It was still in. So, you know, it can go either way. So it's, it's kind of an interesting little way that they do it. Um, not, you know, and unlike the Premier League and some of the other leagues where it's the top three that goes up, they go, eh, we're going to have the third and that bet. We're going to give the – a chance for the, that third place team to prove that they're Bundesliga one worthy and a chance for that 16th place team to prove that, you know, that they're not Bundesliga two, right? So right. let me ask you a question. Do you, do you like that format compared to what they have in England with the EFL championship? So uh, they have a playoff system in uh, the EFL championship. Do you prefer the Bundesliga and Bundesliga two little relegation playoff format there? Well, so you got to take into, and I don't know the statistics on the the uh, English league, but the statistics in, in Bundesliga one, the teams that usually get promoted have a very strong chance within the two two years. I think it's like fifty sixty percent chance of the, the within the first two years to get relegated mm -hmm. back down to the second league. You look at this year, uh, Bochum and Firth, who both got promoted. And they're sitting at the straight bottom looking to be demoted. So it kind of protects. Um, and what I mean by protect it, it tries to ensure that the appropriate teams stay up. Yep. And what I mean by that is a team that is actually ready to compete within Bundesliga one. So for that standpoint, I do like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's not just giving the, 
the Bundesliga to the one the Bundesliga one team another chance. It's more or less ensuring that the Bundesliga two team is in fact ready to complete peak in Bundesliga one, and that's even before the transfer market happens. So yeah, they can even make improvements. But as you know, I mean, if you're a smaller club and you're getting promoted, it's not as easy to just go out and splash a lot of cash. That's what Furth and Bochum. That's the problem that they're having is. Yeah. They are smaller type clubs, and when they came in, it's kind of like this is who we have, and they're going forward with it. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a unique little format. I like it. Um, I think I like the EFL Plant Championship format a little bit better, but that's okay. This is a unique one, and that's good. Well, why don't why don't we jump in and talk about how the Bundesliga season has been going so far? Because currently, uh, we're on international break here, uh, yep. and we are seven games into the season in. That to me, the table's kind of shaking out where we all thought it would be. You've got Bayern at the top, you've got Bayern Leverkusen in second, and down at the bottom, you've got those those newly promoted teams in Bochum and Goethe Firth. Um, obviously, there's some teams that are kind of a little bit lower than maybe what you were expecting. I, RB Leipzig and, and Stuttgart, for example. Um, but the big boys, Bayern, are at top um, where they're supposed to be. Uh, but they had a little stumble this past weekend, didn't they? Where they lost to Frankfurt. Yep. And they're at the top, but they're not like they they're they're actually tied with Leverkusen. So, and it, this is not really what I expect. I didn't expect Leverkusen, who um, is a Europa League team right now, did decent last year, but wasn't top four to be number two, sitting with the same record as Munich and basically averaging three to four goals a game in almost every match that they play. So um, I'm a little bit surprised by them. I think okay. they have a fan, they have a new coach this year who uh, won the tour, who came from young boys who won with them several, several years in a row, uh, Simona. And um, he came in and he was specifically bought because of his attacking type style and style type of play and that's how they wanted to play they said we have a certain group of players Florian Verts being one of them um Shek being the other one um and actually this uh Diabe who's actually come on and now uh being called up for the French national team they looked at these players who are all early 20s um or around about early 20s and said this we want to be a quick attacking team and this coach you know works very well with quick attacking teams so uh, to my surprise, I think they are one of the more exciting teams right now playing in the league um, when they want, when, when you watch them because they're very fast and they counterattack and they score just a ton of goals every game. So they're highly entertaining. Um, I think it's impressive that they're sitting second. Uh, I think it's impressive that they're tied with Munich. And coming out of international break, both teams are going to be playing each other uh, for the first match back. So that is going to be a really interesting match and in how it goes. Yeah. Munich stumbled against Frankfurt a bit. Um, they lost, they lost two, one this past weekend to the, yep. the goal scored in the 83rd minute, um, yep. which is, and Frankfurt haven't been doing very well, very well this year. So no. they're lower in the table. So I don't think anybody saw that result coming. Nope. That was actually their first win. So, so um, yeah, they, you know, they kind of pulled it together. They got a new coach as well. So you have a, you have the tale of, of, um basically new coaches within this league where some of them are doing very well yeah. and some of them are kind of stumbling out of the gate and one of them jesse marsh is yeah. i expected leverkusen to be or i expected leipzig to be where leverkusen was at this point yeah um, with the talent they have so I mean, you're you're 100 right. RB Leipzig right now sit eighth in the table. They've got yep. three wins out of seven uh, and three losses. They said three wins, three losses, and a draw, um, and 10, 10 points. You I you expected after last year's performance from RB Leipzig, almost going on to win the league. They they, they came close. Uh, they came you, close. You thought they'd be a little higher up. Again, we're seven games in. Uh, it's a new coach. Things are still shaking out, uh, you know, and we're finding out where where players will fit and how teams will will will, uh, will go along here. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I expected RB Leipzig to be a little bit further up the table than they are right now, and that's because a lot of the new coaches, right? Oh, there's a lot of teams in the Bundesliga that swapped coaches this past uh, off season, so it's 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 interesting, for sure. So, and Leipzig have been doing well the last two matches. 
They've, they've kind of found their, their stride. They have laid an egg in the champions league though, but the, the, the biggest surprise out of all this is this uh, new Kaku, uh, the French international player who actually hasn't been called up to the French team yet. I expect if he keeps up the form, he probably will. He's got four goals in seven matches. He has four goals in two champion leagues matches. He's on a roll where he's basically scoring every game the last four, five, six starts that he has, you know. So he was the guy who um, had the hat trick against City. He's the, the only shining moment in the whole game was the fact that he scored himself yep. three goals. And then he had one against Club Bruges. And he's and the goals he's scoring are really phenomenal goals. Um, what's interesting is this last game, they they benched their you know their marquee striker that they just bought and kind of put back on uh, Yusuf Poulsen. So they bench Andre Silva, they put on Poulsen, and then they bring Andre Silva in as kind of a game changer. And it was kind of locked in 0-0 as Silva comes in, scores, has an assist, does well. I think that's what Marsh is going to have to try to do is figure out, because he has the talent. You also have like Danny Olmo from Spain, who's kind of injured, hasn't been playing. Um, you have attacking talent all over the place on this team. So I think he just has to figure out the right mix. And I think he's starting to do that. And you've kind of seen it the last two, two, three games. I agree. I agree. It, it takes time. As we said, you know, it's a new coach getting to know those players and, and they're getting to know him and the tactics and what he's expecting on the field. Um, one team that hasn't really, um, uh, I, I would say hasn't exceeded our expectations, but has, is exactly where we all thought they would be. Uh, Borussia Dortmund currently sit third, uh, one point out of first. Um, yep. Even even with missing players this year, uh, Holland Erling Holland's been missing for the past two or three games with an injury, uh, and then Gio Reyna. I think he's only played two games this year for them and missed uh, four or five so far. So uh, they've got injuries, um, but they're winning. They're scoring goals. They're exciting. They got five wins out of seven. Um, that's a team that we all expected them to be, you know, especially after this summer with the big transfer speculation and they held on to, and on to Holland to make a push. So they're right there where we, uh, where we expected them to be. Um, it's, it's still exciting to watch them play. They are one of the most fun teams to watch play when Holland, Reyna, Bellingham, uh, Roos, uh, when they've got their team on the field and they're attacking because, man, are they quick and is it fun to watch. Um, right. And the new hot name on that team is this uh, Malin, um, or Malian, uh, Netherlands uh, striker that they had. So he's the guy who stepped in for um, Holland because of the injury, and I thought he did pretty well. The nice thing about Dortmund is, is they do kind of have a deep, team when when it comes to attacking talent you just named it you know Ruiz um Reina, Reina Bellingham and all those yeah Bellingham Bellingham my 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 brain just like stopped working but now you have Melian and you have Julian Brennan um so you got a decent uh, attacking depth squad there and players you can move around the board when one isn't healthy or ready to go so they should, I mean, they should continue being a fun team to watch. It'll be interesting what they do down the stretch. They yeah. are only one point out. Um, when they played Munich earlier this year, they kind of had their number. But you know what? That was the first game with the new coach. Yep. It'll be interesting to see what happens down the stretch here when they, when they, you know, when they go up against them again. So yeah. we'll, we'll see. So... Um. Uh, there was something posted on the We Are Soccer fan, um, Facebook page uh, group today that I don't know if it was you who posted it, but it really interested me that said, um, if if you think about it, Jude Bellingham has a chance to be FIFA, young FIFA player of the year until 2026. He's so young that he could win that that trophy every single year for the next five years um because he's only 18 years old and he is manning that midfield and making that team go it is phenomenal to watch him do that at 18 years old man um, not to not to bash on bellingham because yeah he he is a very good player we'll see how long he stays at door mode you have florian verts who's about the same age he's lighting it up too yep. you have uh munich 
has their younger younger player there that um, is actually doing quite well in oh geez the name forget escapes me late at night but you have another younger player um Jamal Musiala in Munich, who's actually doing very well as, as well, also a similar age, um, 18 as well, who's, yep. who's not, he, he comes in off the bench because, you know, they're so deep in Munich, but he's still doing, every time he comes off on the bench, he's doing well. He's basically going to be Mueller's, they're even saying on the national team, whatever, that guy's Mueller's replacement. Oh, I so, believe it. yeah. He, yeah. It's, it's interesting because that's what the Bundesliga does have is a lot of young talented players that are that are playing right now because that's just their motto they if you're talented enough they you get to play right you know that uh that Musiala his his mom still drives he's so young his mom still drives into practice every day yeah yeah brilliant isn't it I, I, I fucking love that I think it's brilliant um if, if if while we're talking about young players what about uh Joseph Scali who's who scored his first goal you mean Joseph Scali the third youngest player ever to score in the Bundesliga, Joseph Scully. Yes, sir. Um, did you see that goal? That I goal did. What a great thing of beauty. I believe it, it took him nine seconds from the time that the ball left the goalkeeper for him to actually score. Nice. Um, he is a very good player yep. at 18, playing and starting almost like I think he's got all seven starts this season with Gladbach. Definitely. I'm waiting for him to be called up to the national team because – He's good enough, in my opinion. Um, I I think the only reason that they're waiting is because they got a lot of players, and he is pure American, so he's not going to go anywhere else. Right. You know, so uh, yeah, he is he is one to watch. I think he's an exciting player for Gladbach. Um, it's exciting. He will be exciting for the U.S. national team, and he did it all in a T-shirt too. <laughs> God, I hate that uniform. God, I hate that strip. That uh, that Puma kit. It is, they, it, it they is a T-shirt. Why? I, I know, I know, I know. It's terrible, isn't it? That freaking Puma. I, I would hope Gladbach gets through their financial woes and can <laughs> <buy some> <laughs> Man City as well. They must be having some financial issues as well because they so they wear that stream that same strip with the the name of the team on there. Um, but it was good to see Joseph Scully score his first goal. Um, yeah. He is pure American. You're right. And you're, and I think, I think you are 100% correct when you say he probably hasn't been called up into camp for this uh, U S men's national team world cup qualifiers, because they are pretty deep at left uh, left back. And um, you know, it is what it is. I'm sure he keeps plugging away. Uh, as most Americans go over there do uh, into the Bundesliga, he'll find his way into that U.S. men's national team. Yep. Uh, another yep. U.S. men's national team player uh, who's playing over there right now, but who's struggling a little bit, uh, one John Brooks, right? Um, very, very good central defender, but he's had his issues the past month, man. Um, How, however, he came in as a sub hmm. and didn't get a red card. Oh. The other center back got a red card. <laughs> <laughs> So, in fairness, you know, yeah, I mean, they, you know, he's 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 having his struggles. A uh, run up form isn't uh, isn't that great, but I mean that that happens. I think he's a class player. I think he'll come through, um, and we'll see it down the stretch. Um, another U.S. player, center back, though, that actually is doing very well for Hoffenheim is Chris Richards, yep. who's. He's playing for Hoffenheim, who's been starting regularly for Hoffenheim, who I believe had an assist um, last game. Yeah, did have an assist on a, a Kremer goal um, last uh, two games ago against Wolfsburg when during that win. And they're sitting right behind Gladbach at uh, 12th position on the table. So he's been a regular starter. He can't, you know, he's actually owned by Munich. Munich loaned him out last year, and Hoffenheim started him all throughout. They're loaning him out now again, and it looks like he's right back into the starting position. So we'll see if he makes that Hoffenheim rule, uh, rule a permanent one. Um, Munich has a lot of good center backs, so it's it'd be tough for a, a young guy to, to break through. You know, we'll see, though. You know, it depends on what Munich value him as. So. All right. Agreed. Let me give me 
give me one team right now in the Bundesliga who you think is going to, by the end of the year, be up into that top four position, right? So is it going to be your Stuttgart, who we expected to be a little bit higher up in the league than 12th currently? Is it Frankfurt, who've been off to a terrible start? Um, could they put something together after this uh, Bayern Munich win and get up into that top four? Is it Wolfsburg, who were off to a tremendous start in the first five games with wins? Uh, who? What team do you think is going to be the surprise team this year and climb into that Champions League. Uh, so there are two teams that I already consider surprise teams. And one that I'm, I'm going to put my Homer hat on and say that maybe they're going to be a little bit better down the stretch. One of those teams is already sitting in top four, which is Freiburg. Mm -hmm. They haven't lost a game. So they're sitting um, fourth, yep. three, four wins, three draws. They haven't lost a game. They're playing extremely well. They're a team that just plays well. It's not a team of any superstars. Like I, if I were to even name any of the players, there's no one notable there that anyone would be like, oh yeah, that guy. They beat Dortmund. They beat my Stuttgart jerks. They tied Cologne, which is was actually a good tie, and I'll get to that in a minute. So they're doing very well. And the funny thing about it is this Baumgart has this team just rocking and rolling. Their fans are showing up in droves, you know, 50,000 strong in their stadium. And they're, well, actually with that's Cologne, it was Baumgart, but Freiburg is moved to their new stadium and it's just working for them. So um, Freiburg has been a bit of a surprise in at fourth. We'll see if they can keep it up. I mean, again, they haven't lost a game and they had, you know, they had their one uh, victory against Dortmund, which was a good one. Sure. Cologne with Baumgart and their 50,000 strong yeah. stadium. Sorry, again, kind of merged them together in the uh, middle was a team that was, as I said, relegation battle fighting last year, um, almost got knocked out had to take it to, you know, their, their playoff game, got a new coach. He has a new system with a two striker pair. And now they're three wins, three draws, only one loss. That one loss was a one goal defeat. I mean, it was three, two, but it was one goal down defeat by Munich. Sure. They're doing extremely well. Yep. So these two teams, Freiburg and Cologne are really have kind of come out of nowhere. Um, in my opinion, you know, they weren't ones that were heavy on the radar. Maybe it's helping that they're not playing any extra European games as well. Mm -hmm. And they can focus just purely on, you know, uh, the, the, the Polka and the, um, and the league. So those two teams are, are ones that I, they're fun to watch. It'll be interesting to see how they kind of go. And then the third one, I'm going to say it, everyone's going to hate me for it. I don't care. But I'm throwing it out there, my Stuttgart, and they are now starting to get healthy. They're starting to get all their players back. Uh, Cialis, uh, which was their their bright shining star, who was injured and also had that issue with uh, his citizenship, basically mm -hmm. that whole blackmail thing, yep. is going to be ready to play here in a couple weeks. Uh, they brought in a, a, a player from Pettiburn, this. Um, uh, Furek, um, he's done very well, and they bought in uh, a loney striker from Wol uh, Wolfsburg, who is actually up for Rookie of the Year this this month. So they're kind of getting healthy and getting ready to actually, I think, make a better push these next few weeks, depending on who they play. I also, you know, I don't want to say they're a surprise, so I don't count them as that, but Leipzig, I think, will will definitely close this gap and move up here. Um, but to me, I pegged them at second slash competing for first, so it's not really a surprise. I think they're underperforming right now. So. Sure. I'm going to agree with you on the Leipzig, RB Leipzig. Definitely yeah. have uh, a little bit further down the table than what we expected. I think by the end, oh, yeah. they will be up there. Another one I'm going to I'm gonna put out there for you. I, I, I agree with the ones you're talking about there, Freiburg, Cologne, um, Stuttgart, I think, you know, at the beginning of the season, we both said Stuttgart should be, should finish up uh, fairly high in the table, but another one I'm going to throw out there for you. Um, and not just because they beat Bayern Munich, but that, but Frankfurt who are after seven games, one win, 
five draws, one loss in a negative two goal difference. So, you know, a team like that, who's got five draws and only one loss, um, if they can figure out how to turn some of those draws into wins, I mean, they would easily be, if, if, if two of those draws, you know, uh, were wins, they'd be up in the to seven, sixth, seventh, eighth position right now. Um, so if they can do that moving forward, I think they will, they'll be a little bit of a surprise. Do I expect to see them in the top four? No, I don't think they're going to quite get there, but I do expect to see them in the top, uh, top eight by the end of the season, once they start putting it all together. They're an anomaly and they'll be interesting down the stretch. I think their new coach, it all depends on him. I mean, he was doing decent um, when he was with Gladbach and then all of a sudden just tanked it with them, you know? So, um, and that was right around the time that he accepted the Frankfurt job. So, well, you know, we'll see. Um, they're also competing for Europa. Yep. They have a tie to win there. Yep. They're doing quite well in Europa. Yep. Um, Dortmund is doing quite well in their Champions League. They are. I think Munich is still, I think they're winning the Champions League. I, I don't see a team that can beat them. Um, so you, when you talk about some of these teams, they, they got those extra games. It'll be interesting to see how they, do they have the squad? The question is, do they have the squad depth to keep, keep going down the stretch? Munich does Dortmund does, uh, Wolfsburg might, um, and they're doing all right, actually in the champions league. I don't know if Frankfurt has it. Right. Leverkusen does. I think Leverkusen does. I think they could, uh, compete very well and go deep in the Europa and compete, continue be competing in the league. So, yeah. well, we'll see. Um, we haven't talked about the bottom three and I don't think, uh, I really don't think there's a need to, but I think, as you said, at the beginning of this, uh, Bundesliga chat sign today, Bochum, Gertha Firth, uh, have not had great starts to the season. Um, and I both, I think both of us are expecting those two teams to be relegated who finishes in that relegation playoff spot. Uh, at this point, you know, uh, Bielefeld sit there. I, I gotta be honest. It looks like it might be them who finishes in that 16th spot come the end of the season. And, and we'll see if they're good enough, uh, to remain in the Bundesliga when they head to that relegation playoff spot against the Bundesliga. Well, and, and, uh, Hartha is really struggling as well. Mm-hmm. So even though they're sitting 14 and they have two wins and Bielefeld has no wins, Bielefeld has four draws. Yeah. Hartha has no draws. They have five straight losses, yeah. you know? Yeah. So when, yeah, you, in the game, maybe a bounce goes away a different way here or there. One of those maybe is a win. And then all of a sudden they're a little bit further out the table. Yep. So I think Hertha, Ber- uh, Hertha Berlin actually is, is struggling again, you know? So yeah. um, we'll see if they can pull this one out um, and, and actually continue mustering on, or are they going to have it where they, had it last year and they're all the way at the bottom and have to kind of claw their way out. So, well, once all these teams come back, have, or once all these teams have their players come back from international break, the next seven or eight games are going to be very crucial for a lot of these teams, whether they plan on making a run up to the top or just pulling themselves out of the basement, because uh, you know, after, after 15 to 17 games, if you are in that bottom three, uh, it's going to be tough to claw your way out, uh, you know, into the spring there. So uh, lots to look forward to in the coming weeks uh, for Bundesliga. Lots more to come from Bundesliga chat time. Um, Nate, anything you want to add today? Or we want to wrap it up with uh, with that, my friend. No, I mean, I mean, just looking ahead. I mean, you're talking about the next uh, week in two weeks, October 16th. You got some interesting matchups where it really is going to be are you, are you strong or are you, you know, or, or are you a pretender or are you a contender? You know, mm-hmm. so you, Freiburg goes up against Leipzig right off the bat. You yep. know what I mean? They haven't lost a game. Let's see if they can keep it up with Leipzig. Yep. Um, Wolfsburg and Union Berlin will face each other, and that should be a, a pretty strong matchup. Berlin's been pretty solid. Stuttgart has to play Gladbach. Wild Black's on a roll. Stuttgart has a couple wins. We'll see where it goes there. And then Munich versus Leverkusen on Sunday that, that week. Those games, in my opinion, are are, are going to be telling for a lot of these teams. You know, if Leverkusen walks out and gets a head punched in 4-0 against Munich, okay. You know, if Freiburg uh, 
holds on strong and somehow wins one or two against Leipzig, impressive, you know? So um, th- those are going to be some interesting stories going in that week there for those, di- those teams. Some interesting games coming up in the next week and a half uh, once we come back from international break. Well, another great session with Nate, our Bundesliga expert on Bundesliga chat time from We Are Soccer. Nate, thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate the insight and expertise you provide. Uh, and again, uh, we'll do it again my next week, my friend. All right. Take care. Cheers. Prost.